Didi and family were in South Africa at the same time as me, so we played the Gary Player Country Club at Sun City. It's the home of the Nedbank Challenge on the European Tour and the historic million dollar golf tournaments where Gary Player, Jack Nicklaus and Tiger Woods have all walked the fairways. But you know that guy who wants to play the back tees to experience the course? Yep, that was me, while everyone else played from the whites. This round will highlight a few things. 1. Stress-free golf is the only way to play golf. 2. Taking new swing thoughts onto the course is suicide. 3. Good pitching, chipping and putting are essential. 4. Playing only committed stress-free shots that you know how to execute on every shot will change your life forever. 5. Conservative golf with good plans beats hit and hope every time. I knew from the TV that this green slopes back to front, so I needed to hit it short of the pin to have an uphill putt. These greens roll about 11.5, maybe 12 on the stimp meter, so downhill putts are scary. There was no real need to hit a driver here, so I wanted to test it out on a wide hole. This one shot left a bad feeling in me, so I put the driver away for the rest of the round. It's just that simple. Stress-free golf. Oh no, what kind of a layup is that? The pin is tucked on the left behind the bunker. The opening to the green is on the right, so I just go ultra safe well right of the pin. This is why you never aim at a hazard. I couldn't see the fairway over the fallen tree, so I figured I would hit a draw off the bunker. You must aim at a place where a straight shot will be okay, but where your intended shot will be perfect. Always remember, the fairway bunker shot is the same as any other shot. Just lift your chin a bit before the shot. That will let you catch it a little cleaner off the ground. I don't often miss two-footers, but when I do, it shakes me to my core. This is a pretty long par 3, to a pin cut tight on the right side, just over a big water hazard. They call this a sucker pin, and I ain't no sucker. I'm not fading this toward the water. Simple draw off the middle of the green, and GTFO with a par. On this approach shot, I went at the pin. The right play would be to go left of the pin, toward the entrance of the green. Then if I'm short, I would have an easy angle to pitch from. Now I'm pitching over the bunker from the rough. I learned my lesson here and didn't take on the pin. I went straight to the big entrance of the green to just get it on. Just on the front. Bad boy. Very nice. 
That's not a bad No! Oh. Come on, boy! Come on, boy! This is a top tip, players. If you can't see the break, and you look from both angles, and both angles tell you a different story, and your eyes just cannot see which way the putt will move, just hit it straight. Sometimes, there are such things as straight putts. This is my best play of the day, with a fantastic plan and execution. I could see almost none of the landing area, maybe 10 or so yards of it. I had trees, water, and bush left and right. I was in high stress mode, so I thought, why not just hit two three irons near the green, then chip and putt? I mean, it's the stroke index one, the most difficult hole on the course. Stress level reduced to almost zero. This is uphill, so it plays a bit longer. To be sure I get there, I hit a hybrid at the entrance of the green. I set it up on the right and play for a draw. I yanked it a little, but it finished on the front edge. Stress level still hovering around zero. Uphill chip, and it's so easy, I'm thinking of holing it. Great plan, relatively good execution, easy life. So what do you want to do? I'm gonna hit a driver. Give him and there's space right, eh? Give him a ball up. Give it a wallet. Yeah. Give it a four beam. Can I go? Let's go! Ah, oh, fell back on that, man. Notice how my whole swing changes just because of my headworms. We don't have a bad golf swing. We only have bad thoughts. Bad thoughts manifest into bad golf swings. <laughs> Think better thoughts. I didn't think this one through. I could have also chipped it over the trees further right. This wasn't my best play because I needed to run it through Kikiu, which eats your ball like Velcro. This will be the last driver of the day. Stress equals bad thoughts equals bad swings equals high scores. But players, never ever give up on a hole. In the past, I may have been so upset with not being able to hit the driver that I would have double bogeyed this hole for sure. In my This was not my best shot. Short siding myself here, but I was going for the green with a big fade since the entrance to the green was here. To play better, more thoughtful golf, use your shot shape to your advantage. Always look for entrance to the greens. Perhaps your regular shot shape is perfect to allow you to shape it, so you don't try go directly over a hazard. If your shot shape doesn't suit the entrance to the hole, then fall back onto the idea of hitting to the front edge when trouble is at the back, and to the back edge when trouble is in the front. Guys, I don't like hitting flop shots. I rarely ever use them. If you think you need to learn to hit a flop shot, you better be a scratch handicap. If you're not, the flop shot is not going to help you. Better positioning your shots and strategizing on a hole will drop your score much quicker and more dramatically than a flop shot. I may have to hit a flop shot once in 10 rounds and only when I short side myself really, really, really badly. Otherwise, I just focus on getting it back on the green so I have a putt. I can always hole a putt.
On this shot, I use the uphill slope which gave me more loft anyway. I chip it like normal and just make sure I am aggressive so I don't leave it in the bunker. Hitting it 8 foot past the hole is far better than a bunker shot from 8 feet short of the green. Simplify your life and chip normally with normal technique. Hole 11 is super high stress. From the tee, you can barely see any fairway. You can clear the hazard with an iron on the right, a hybrid or fairway wood further left, or a driver even further left of that. The catch is, the further right you go, the longer your approach is to the green. At this moment, the forward was most stress-free, even though I hadn't hit it in months. I knew I could hit a little fade or draw with it and clear the hazard. The hybrid was feeling hook happy, while the badly struck three iron would be in the hazard. Another brain fart here is aiming at this bunker expecting a big draw. It's so clear to see, entrance of the green is here. Just hit it to the back edge a few yards right of the pin. I usually use a 58 degree wedge from the bunker, but from bunker shots over 15 or so yards, I use a 54 degree for a little more distance. Jeez, man, you almost killed that bird. It's <laughs> dinner time here. Oh, too much in my head again, bro. Boy. Bravo. Oh, no, man. The four hands. Way short. Very nice. Where's the next hole? Too fast. Boy, Key. Too fast. Yeah, man. The bunker is links by dear The bunker is links by dear Boy, he's into the Jeez. The stop short. I need to find a tactic to overcome the headworms and silly shots I hit between holes 12, 13 and 14 every round. This is where I lose most of my strokes. I think it's because I'm not very fit or strong in the core. The pin is on the right side, but I'm not hitting stressful shots, so I just hit a draw with my iron, starting it on the flag. A straight shot will be superb, while my intended shape will be fine, but the important part is I committed to the baby draw and forgot about a fade. Any lingering doubt would produce a shuri. I realized the reason I got better at long range putting is because I focus more on rocking my shoulders like a metronome instead of allowing the hands and wrists to be involved. I tend to be a bit handy when I'm putting. 
I noticed a much better strike and more consistent speed control with my shoulder rocking motion. When my hands and wrists are too involved, I lose feel and my distance control evaporates. I don't want to take that water on, so I aim well right and use the slope to bounce it back onto the green. If it doesn't bounce back, I chip and putt it for par. Right over the top. What's the line here? You reckon over the dead tree? Over the sun. The palm tree. Ah, in between the palm tree. Right in that V. Yeah. Nope. Not an ideal way to end, but it keeps the handicap up a little. Players, eliminate stress from your golf. Watching this round back was far more enjoyable than watching my 71 at Dynasty. That was a high stress round, while this one at Gary Player Country Club for a 75 was, in my eyes, a better round. Except for a few holes between 12 and 15, it was exactly how I want to play golf.